I know what you guys are going to say. It's about dang time we're doing another cooking video. And today I'm going to be doing a goose video. I don't think I've done a goose cooking video yet other than like the sausage because that's primarily what I use my goose meat for is making sausage or jerky and stuff, stuff like that. But I killed a speck the other day. And so, yep, there's, there's a couple speck, speckle belly goose breasts. And we're gonna be making some fajitas. I know that last year I did a goose fajitas video when I was live on YouTube. So I wanna do something, you know, a little bit more informative than just being live on YouTube. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna try and clean up these breasts a little bit. I'm gonna cut some of the fat off, maybe get some rid of some of that uh, silver skin on there, and then we'll get it marinating. And the marinade that I like to use, my mom introduced me to this when I was a kid. And this is Fabulosa quick fajita marinade and this stuff is legit I've done it on duck meat and it just turns it from duck to like beef fajitas it's ridiculously good so if you guys can find this stuff or any kind of quick like fajita marinade it is phenomenal and it works really well with uh, duck or goose meat so most of these recipes that I do you can do it with goose or duck it does not really matter so let's go ahead and get this uh, speck of belly goose cleaned up a little bit Okay, so we just got two breasts here, and I just want to trim off some of this kind of fat and other not so great stuff. So if you're doing this with like a, a Canada goose or something, you really want to get a lot of that fat off, because um, it, it does hold some gaminess to it. A lot of this, just kind of, I don't know, you can call it like gristle or whatever, that's just not that great, and uh, you can just trim it off real quick and easy, and makes it makes it a little bit of a difference this goes for both uh, Canada's and specs if you look close there's like a little bit of silver skin that runs down this side of the of the breast and so what I like to do is just kind of cut in there you're not gonna lose a whole heck of a lot of meat but you're gonna get rid of some stuff that's just not that great to chew up and eat we're gonna just cut that little bit off there it's okay if you lose a little bit of meat. It's not gonna hurt anybody's feelings. And then there is, it's actually a, a tendon here that runs all the way through the breast. So I like to just kind of get as much of it out as I can. It just makes it easier to chew in the finished product. You guys probably can't tell, but that's, that's just a really big tendon. You don't really want that. So, and then we'll get this little bit on this side. I'm sorry if the camera angle is not great. It's kind of difficult to film yourself doing this. So I hope you guys understand the concept here. But we're just kind of trimming it, getting rid of that chewy stuff that you don't really want to eat. So right there, that should be pretty good. We got, a bit of the, we got rid of this big piece of tendon here, and then that one right there, and then this one right here. So um, that should be pretty good. We'll go ahead and bag it up. And we'll get started on the other breast and get to marinating. This just smells like mom's fajitas. And that's a really good thing. So we're going to go ahead and toss these in the fridge and let them marinate for a few hours. And we got to get peppers and onions cut up. And um, that's pretty much it. I want to give you guys a good little bit of advice. So there's a there's quite a few people out there that say that goose and duck meat is not good. And all I can say to those people is that they haven't had it cooked correctly. And so what I want you guys to learn from my cooking videos is how to cook it correctly and how to go through the steps that you need to take to make it a palatable meal that you're going to want to eat over and over again. And so like you just saw me do where I took a little bit of time to trim off some of that extra fat trim off the silver skin, that's gonna make a big difference at the end product because it's not gonna be chewy, it's not gonna be super gamey. I'm marinating it in a good marinade that I know will work. If you're one of those people that's like, ah, duck meat's not that great or goose meat's kinda of gross, just kinda of take your time when you're preparing it and don't overcook it and make sure you marinate it in something that's gonna work with the duck and goose meat. I, I guess the biggest thing I can say is you got to know how to use the meat and what type of dish is appropriate for the duck and goose meat. So um, I'm glad I can make these videos for you guys. And while you're here, go ahead and leave me a thumbs up and then we'll go ahead and get started on these peppers and onions. Well, I 
think I, I might have got a little heavy on the onions, but it'll be okay. We got the goose meat marinating still. I'm gonna try and get the veggies cooked a little bit more because the goose probably won't cook as long as the as the vegetables do. So pretty basic fajitas. We're gonna have a tortilla, and I picked up some uh, some authentic queso fresco. I'm trying to keep things legit around here, and we'll. Do uh, the goose meat and then the peppers and onions and I've got some refried beans I got the fat free kind because I don't want to be a fat lard so we'll keep cooking here let these things do the trick for all of you guys that cringe when I use these on my uh, Teflon pans well you know what I'm a college student and these are my mom's old pans and I don't give a so you guys know that I did a quail hunting video uh, what was that last week or something whenever I posted it but I've got some quail meat in the freezer that I'm wanting to cook up, so maybe next week we'll do the quail for cooking. I'm really wanting to get back in the habit of doing these once a week. You guys seem to really like the cooking videos once a week, so we're going to keep at it. I've got some pheasant that was given to me by uh, Hayden when he went pheasant hunting, so I've got a few pheasant breasts to use. I've got some quail meat to use, so maybe we'll do goose this week, maybe we'll do some quail next week. I've got a few duck breasts left to do some other stuff with. so. We'll just uh, we'll keep at it here. I'll start thinking of some ideas. And if you guys have any recipes that you want to see me do, go ahead and send me an email at ksfisherman1 at gmail.com and send me some recipes that you guys like, and I will share them with the YouTube community here. But goose fajitas, quick, easy, and perfect for when you're done with work. You let it marinate all day, pull it out, and do this, and you're going to be munching in over here like Rachel Ray doing 30 minute meals. Put a little dab of oil in there so then the goose doesn't stick to the pan. That's never good. You guys like how warped this pan is? Yep, works great. But we'll uh, get that little coat of oil on the pan so then the, the meat doesn't stick on there too bad. Gotta make sure you got a hot pan before you throw the meat in there because you do want it to cook up nice. But it is smelling delicious over here. Smelling like a good old fashioned Mexican restaurant. Oh yeah, baby. Go ahead and give these a little bit of a flip. They're probably not even close to done yet, but don't want them to overcook on one side. Let's swing around over here. Man, look at them veggies. Them things look good. The peppers are cooking a lot slower than the onions did, but that's that's okay. Been trying to like separate them out over here on like one side to make sure the peppers actually like touch the pan and cook and whatnot. Oh well, a little underdone peppers won't ever hurt anybody, you know? Things are coming along quite nicely and it smells delicious and I'm getting excited. I'm getting actually pretty hungry. So I'm ready to uh, eat some goose fajitas tonight. Got a meat thermometer here and I'm shooting for about between 125 and 130 for the meat and then I'll pull it off, let it sit for a couple of minutes, then we'll slice it up and we'll be ready to go. So let's check the temp and see where we're at. One nineteen on that guy. One twenty two on that one. Looks like we're getting really, really, really close to being done. Oh yeah, we're done. Now the trick is to just let these sit and rest. I pulled them off. I was reading a little closer to 130, so I'm hoping these guys are still good, like medium rare, but I want to let them sit for a couple of minutes just so then the juices kind of go back into the meat and they, they just kind of chill out for a little bit. Oh yeah, baby. That is exactly 
what we wanted right there. Nice medium rare. Cut it up and then some nice strips to put inside the uh, fajitas. Smells delicious, looks delicious. This looks really good. Now time for the taste test. Trick is, you wanna balance your fajita. You don't wanna to put too much meat on there to where it's overwhelming and hard to eat. You can always go back and make another one. I did kind of overcook the onions a little bit, so a um, little tip for you guys here. You cook your peppers before your onions. And I'll put a little queso fresco on there, a little authentic Mexican cheese. Would you look at how beautiful that looks? Let's dig in. Okay, so I did not put the beans in the fajita, so don't worry, I didn't do that. <clears throat> We've got the goose meat with the peppers and onions and the queso fresco on here. So it's time to give it a taste and see what we think. all about transport for me so I got to close out one end so then it doesn't fall out the bottom because that's always inconvenient I really hope there aren't any BBs in here I think I might need to go back for another taste here ah magnificent I nailed it so, if you guys don't know this, I like to eat, and so with that being said, that means I like to cook, and I generally cook a lot of good meats. So, this one, I knew it was gonna be good going into this, so I wanted to share it with you guys. I highly recommend you do this with whatever waterfowl meat you have. Duck, goose, coot, I don't know. It's probably good, but, the, the meat just takes on the fajita marinade so well and it just kind of, it doesn't mask any kind of like duck or goose flavor to it. It just enhances the palatability of it to where you're knowing you're eating a fajita, you're not eating duck or goose where it's kind of got that ducky, gamey taste to it. And it's all about how you cook it. If you guys saw, that meat is still real pink in the middle. And I found the more pink in the middle you have, the better it's going to taste. <clears throat> when you start to overcook your meat, it takes on that ducky, gamey, goosey, greasy, gross flavor that a lot of people associate with duck meat. So take it off the pan when it's about 130 degrees, let it sit, it will continue to cook once you take it off the pan um, and just kind of let it, let it kind of simmer down, a little cool off a little bit before you cut into it and you're gonna be rocking and rolling eating some magnificent goose fajitas this everybody will like it you know you tell people it's steak they'll believe it so ah perfect i didn't want to get too fancy with it you know just goose meat peppers onions tortilla and a little queso fresco on top your perfect goose fajita so i'm gonna finish up eating this here so I want to let you guys know that if you want to get this hat or a hoodie that I'm wearing or anything like that and you want to support the channel, be sure to go check out the link in the description. It'll take you over there to where you can buy some apparel and it means a lot to have you guys supporting the channel. You can also follow me on my social media. I've got a Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, and a Facebook. So be sure to follow me on there and stay up to date with what's going on. But that's all I've got for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and I will catch you on the next one.